reveals all their reaction of a diene found in eucalyptus oil. So, in this lab, the purpose is to take a half milliliter of eucalyptus oil, which I have in a syringe here, and within that eucalyptus oil is a diene, a mystery diene. And we're going to figure out what it is and how much of there it is. The way we're going to do this is by forming an adduct or a product that we can easily remove out of the solution and analyze. Uh, we're going to form an adduct through the Diels Alder reaction and by combining with this malic and hydride here. Uh, so uh, let's start. I've got my range, it's mostly measured out already. Uh, so I've got my half mil of eucalyptus oil. This is going into my 10 mil round bottom flask. And then this is going to be combined with some diethyl ether, which is going to act as the solvent in today's reaction. And 
what that looks like is I'm looking for the diethyl ether to be just vaporizing. Uh, if I turned off my stirring, I'd like to see tiny little bubbles uh, that look like boiling. Uh, if I don't see that, that's okay, as long as the vapors are either clouding up the top part of this glassware, or even better, if I'm seeing my reflux condenser working and it's cooling down the vapors and they're dripping back down into solution. So to confirm that I have a reflux, I can either look for gentle boiling, clouding up of the glassware, or dripping back down from the condenser. And once I see that, I will start my 45 minute timer. Okay, so uh, we spent about 45 minutes refluxing our uh, reaction. Um, after that, we took it off of heat and let it cool to room temperature. And now we've got it in a little ice water bath. So, um, whereas the diethyl ether with its mostly non-polar but slightly polar moment uh, dissolves everything throughout the reaction period and on heat, uh, now that it's really, really cold, all of our product that we made has solidified in the diethyl ether. Um, in order to get those two away from each other, uh, we're gonna use a nuclear funnel. Um, I've got my funnel over here. I've got my vacuum on. And I'm gonna start by just wetting down the filter paper with a little bit of petroleum ether. And that's gonna suck the paper down onto the Buchner funnel so that nothing slips underneath the paper. This is a big solid chunk, so I'm just gonna grab a spatula and scrape the chunk straight onto the paper here. little shoulder uh, on that joint there. So I did my best. Let's use cold petroleum ether washes to try to get the rest out. Now, I said that diethyl ether was good at dissolving everything during the reaction period, but we're switching to petroleum ether in this step because I don't want to dissolve the product anymore. I want the product to stay solid so that I can collect it. And let's give it one more go. is a powdery, very light, feathery solid. Let's see if I can get that up in there. Come on, little focus. It's got very, very fine little points. Uh, and this nice powder, I would like to remind you, this is not the dyeing that we're trying to identify. This stuff is an adduct 
of the diene that was in the eucalyptus oil and malic anhydride. Uh, so what we're going to do to characterize this product is we are going to take a melting point of it. And because we have three different options for what the diene can be, and we know the three different melting points of their potential adducts with malic anhydride, if we know the melting point of this and we can relate it to an adduct, then we will know which one of the dienes was present in the eucalyptus oil. Uh, even further than that, we're gonna get a mass of this, and we're gonna make the very bold assumption that we collected all of the adduct that was made. So it's 100% yield assumed. Um, and so if we have the mass of this, and we have the molar mass of the adduct, and we know which adduct it actually is, then we will know the moles of adduct that we made. And if we know the moles of adduct that was made, then we can back calculate, because it was a one-to-one -one reaction, we'll know uh, that that's the same number of moles of dying that we started with. Uh, and just as a further note, I would like to just point out that the molar mass of the adduct is exactly the molar mass of malic and hydride plus the molar mass of the original dying. So just to reiterate, step one, use the melting point of the adduct to figure out which ones of the or which one of the dyings was present. Once you know that, you can do the math uh, and the, use the mass of this powder to figure out how much of the dyne was originally in our eucalyptus oil. Um, so I will leave that analysis up to you. I'm gonna work on collecting a uh, mass and melting point of this sample.